Hello and very good evening to all our viewers. This is Vyan Wallet. I am Sumit Chaturvedi. Let's see what is making headlines in the world of business this evening. SpiceJet's former promoter Kalanithi Maran of Sun Group has sought over rupees 3,000 crore compensation from current promoter Ajay Singh and the airline for allegedly causing losses by failing to honor contractual obligations. Suspicion of hacking emerges at Reliance Geo Data Leak case, what could become the biggest case of data breach in India. Alibaba-backed online marketplace Paytm Mall has initiated discussions to pick up a stake in online grocer Big Basket. And reports say global carriers Lufthansa and KLM Air France bulge bracket private equity funds including Blackstone. They are on race to pick stake in Jet Airways. Straight to a top story that is coming from Aviation Space in India. SpiceJet's former promoter Karaniti Maran of Sun Group has sought over 2,000 crore rupees compensation from current promoter Ajay Singh and the airline for allegedly causing losses by failing to honor contractual obligations. However, SpiceJet has said the question of damages does not arise at all. The claim for compensation has been filed before an arbitral tribunal comprising retired Supreme Court judges Arjit Pasayat, Hemant Lakshman, Gokhale and KSP Radhakrishnan. The tribunal was created in end of 2016 under orders of Delhi High Court and is adjudicating on a shared transfer dispute between Marun and Singh. Hearings before the tribunal are ongoing and are expected to conclude in two months. Sources say Marun's rupees 2,000 crores plus compensation claim is based on losses incurred because of SpiceJet's alleged failure to issue convertible warrants and preference shares to him and his KL Airways. They also said if compensation was not forthcoming, Maran will seek restoration of status quo on SpiceJet's ownership. Maran, who owns the Sun TV network in Chennai, has hired Washington-based FTI Consulting, which specializes in estimating financial damages due to breach of contract for the arbitration. Now, our second top Indian story is also from the aviation space where reports say global carriers Lufthansa and KLM Air France and bulge bracket PE funds, including Blackstone Group, KKR and TPG Capital, have joined race along with US Airlines Delta to invest around 200 to 250 million dollars in India's second largest airline, Jet Airways. It is looking to raise capital to fund operations, face growing competition amidst severe macro headwinds, said multiple sources. Jet Airways, in which Abu Dhabi's Etihad owns a 24% stake, has adopted a network strategy independent of its investor and has roped in JP Morgan to raise funds including through a possible stake sale. Indian rules allow 100% FDI in scheduled commercial airlines, but foreign airlines, though, are barred from holding equity stake in Indian carriers above 49%. With Etihad already on board, Jet only has limited headroom and can bring on board another strategic partner by selling up to 24% stake in the airline. Now, with the current market cap of around 6,880 crore rupees, a 24% stake would help Jet Airways raise around $250 million. And news from global auto space where a global car recall may now spread from one to car manufacturers to a dozen others in the United States. Faulty fuel pump parts that have spurred US recalls of more than 450,000 SUVs by Volkswagen and its Porsche and Audi brands were supplied to 13 other automakers and suppliers. German automaker, their parts maker Continental told US regulators. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in US is now probing whether cars and parts sold by those other companies also contain defective fuel pump flanges from Continental which can crack and cause a fuel leak, increasing the risk of a fire. 
Now, in a NHTSA filing made public last week, Continental said it also sold the potentially defective parts to automakers including General Motors, Ford Motor, Fiat Chrysler and Daimler AG's Mercedes. Also, Tata Motors, Jaguar Land Rover could be involved. Now, Alibaba-backed online marketplace Paytm Mall has initiated discussions to pick up a stake in Big Basket, while the online grocer's sale talks with Seattle-based online retail giant Amazon have been stuck the past few weeks. Paytm Mall is likely to invest about $200 million in the Bangalore-based company for a significant minority stake and has begun due diligence. Big Basket was valued at about $450 million when it raised capital in March 2016. Paytm, through its online payments and mobile wallet business, has been targeting categories such as movie and travel ticketing to encourage repeat purchases. Grocery claims the largest share of overall retail market, bigger than categories such as smartphones and fashion that currently dominate online retail market. And Emirates is letting go of dozens of employees as the Persian Gulf carrier continues to push to streamline after years of rapid growth. World's biggest long-haul airline is scaling back senior cabin crews as well as support department workforce, including administration and IT. The cuts at Emirates, which froze hiring last year and hasn't taken on new crew this month, began in last few weeks and affect middle and upper level managers. Dubai-based Emirates said there is no company-wide program to reduce headcount. Emirates Group, which includes the airline and other travel and tourism entities, increased its workforce 11% this fiscal. More than 105,000 employees have our has denied Emirates the reports. Now let's start with a special that could be the biggest data breach in India's history. The data leak in question is Reliance Jio's data leak that pertains to database of over 120 million users of Reliance Jio. Now private data of millions of customers of Reliance Jio may have been compromised through a large-scale hacking attack that revealed information such as subscriber's name, mobile number, email and SIM activation details. Geo, however, called reports of breach as unverified and unsubstantiated claims, but added that it has informed the government about the incident. The matter came to light on Sunday when a website said it hasn't be, hasn't been able to get private details of customers of Geo on a website magicpk.com. The issue has raised concerns about whether the alleged hacking of information may have also led to leakage of Aadhaar data, something that official sources describe as highly unlikely in any case. So the biggest data breach in India is like their suspicion of hacking behind Geo data leak that is currently uh, being now sus suspected. RELGEO has database of over 120 million users that could lead to the biggest data breach in India. While Geo has said that data leak claims are unverified and unsubstantiated, Geo has said that it is clearly not confirmed. Geo said it has informed government about the incident as well, but that has given rise to suspicion it could be hacking. Data leak claim website magicpk.com has been deactivated as well after the news came out. Initial probe by Ernst & Young reveals that Geo's apps and sites were secure initially, but data leak happened and ENY said that any breach could have been at the external vendor's end. It is not the company's fault. Geo had roped in consultancy firm Ernst & Young for investigation into the case. And Geo has also filed an FIR with Navi Mumbai police regarding the whole case. Well, UIDAI, the owner of Aadhaar, government authority says there is no leakage of Aadhaar data so far on this case. But 40 to 45 percent of financial transactions currently happen while mobile devices and they will increase to 60 to 65 percent very soon. On that, we have a big question for our viewers that what if their data is leaked or whether their data is secured or not. To talk more on this, I'm joined by my colleague Sahil, uh, who is tax expert as well. So Sahil, first, uh, first of all to you, uh, how severe do you think 
this data case, this data leak case was? Well, I think for the benefit of our viewers, we need to tell them that all of this right now is completely unverified. And uh, Reliance Geo themselves said this is unverified and this is not from their end. Uh, but, you know, Sumit, this is still the tip of the iceberg. Okay, we have to look at it that way. A lot of information, if it's true, a lot of information was released online. And one of the biggest issues to come out of this that people's Aadhaar information was posted online. Again, not verified, but this is not the first time. If it has happened, it's not the first time that people's you know, Aadhaar information has gone online. So this is not a trivial, trivial matter at all. Uh, but we have to also look at the bigger issue here. Now, a lot of NGOs and activists have been going on for ages, crying for ages, that better Aadhaar management system is required. Okay, but there is a bigger issue at hand over here, if you look at it from another perspective. Uh, and that bigger issue is not just Aadhaar management, it's about owning a smartphone. Because when you own a smartphone, there are a lot of risks associated with that. Okay, uh, In 2020, there will be 1 billion, over 1 billion people in India who will be owning smartphones. Okay, That means you can tell who's calling who, who is messaging who. Uh, where someone is by tapping their uh, GPS. You can also find out if someone is drunk by, you know, just looking at their gyrometers and accelerometers installed in a smartphone. Okay, so imagine if someone can hack into that data on your smartphone and get all that information. Imagine the damage that can be caused by that. So this is a very serious situation and not just smartphones. We are today living in a very interconnected world. Okay, Internet of Things is now a reality. Okay, today uh, with my smartphone, I can control my AC, my fridge, uh, my TV, pretty much my entire house with my smartphone. That's what Internet of Things is: connectivity with your smartphone. Everything is interconnected, and that's a great thing. That's you know that's that's a beautiful concept. But with that, there are a lot of risks that come. There are a lot of risks that are involved with something like that, and we have to be very careful about that because you open uh, people up to a lot of vulnerabilities by doing that. Okay, so you have Internet of Things, you have smartphones, you have this beautiful interconnected system happening here. But we have to also remember all the risks that are associated with it. Now, in WikiLeaks, uh, claimed very recently that uh, the CIA was using uh, Samsung TVs as listening devices mm -hmm. to hear people's well, that's conversations. Quite interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah. So they were they were doing that. We don't know if that's true or not, mm -hmm. but it is very much possible in today's interconnected world. world. So okay. we have to you know keep that in mind when we move forward because it's great to be interconnected, but a lot of risks come with it. Now, let's look at what Prime Minister Modi wants. He wants a digital economy, right? He wants a cashless economy, okay? But what happens when a financial transaction operator, online uh, operator like Paytm collapses? What if someone hacks into that? Well, there goes your digital economy, just like that. All you need is one very good hacker and that's it, it's gone. Prime Minister Modi wants uh, smart cities, another great, beautiful initiative. But again, if someone can hack into one smart home, they can hack into an entire smart city. Imagine the security nightmare, okay? So we have to ask a very important question here. We want digital economy, we want smart cities, but are we actually ready for it? This uh, would like to interrupt you here, Sahil, but for the benefit of our viewers, we would like to know how the data, overall data, which uh, air, the telephone company uses, mobile phone company uses, how is that secured using what software? Can you explain to us how is that secured at all? Well, uh, if you're talking about uh, online data, like if you're talking about mobile networks and transactions, we have a lot of security measures in place. All these companies have a lot of security measures that they say that, you know, are in place. But the problem is we don't know what these security measures actually are. They always say, yes, it, we are ready to handle it. We are ready to handle breaches. But let's look at, you know, even the recent ransomware attack, okay? You, the NHS got attacked nuclear power plants in Ukraine got attacked. Now you would think organizations like that, NHS especially, would have security measures in place to deal with something like that. But no, NHS is one of the biggest, you know, uh, healthcare organizations out there. It provides universal healthcare for the entire United Kingdom. But that collapsed with one ransomware attack. Okay, so a lot of security breaches do exist, but the problem isn't that. The issue is, you know, because these are such big organizations, like Rio, uh, like uh, Reliance Geo is a very big organization, NHS is a very big organization, they tend to have affiliates. Okay, They have smaller organizations within that big organization. So all a hacker really needs to do is uh, target one of those uh, side organizations and then everything will crumble like a pack of cards. And Sahil, for the benefit of our viewers once again, what right do they have or what kind of, we can say that uh, if the data breach happens, where do they stand? Like, what kind of, uh, you, can they go to court? Can they go to consumer court? What can they do? 
Well, I mean, there's no point going to court if you don't know who's done that to you. I mean, who you gonna, who you, who but the you, service who, provider who, who has, you gonna, you know, it has yeah. been uh, compromised with. Yeah, they they've been compromised with. But then again, we have to see where the fault lies. Now, like let's say Reliance Geo is saying that this is an external vendor, right? But one can then argue, yes, it's, attacks usually do happen from external vendors, or they do happen from external parties. So that's happened. But why did you not have the security that you needed in place to make sure something like that never happened? So there's that question, right? Uh, then there's also another question, what happens next? Now that you've done this, where do you go from here? Were your security systems uh, secure enough to deal with this? But now you've reached a point where all your users' data is available online. So where do you go from here? So what? there's a lot of uh, things that people can do from different perspectives. From the consumer perspective, I think what consumers need to do, they need to put uh, pressure on government bodies to make sure that you know there are a lot of investment is being made in cyber uh, anti cyber uh, cyber attack programs okay a lot of uh, organizations in india who deal with this situation are extremely underfunded not just in india in fact also in countries like uh, you know far developed countries like america they're underfunded like the homeland security investigation for example it is completely underfunded these people track child pornography they track online trafficking and they are underfunded the same problem here with india okay so one thing that consumers can do and everyone has to take responsibility in this one thing they can do is put pressure on the government to make sure that this is ensured then what can uh, platform providers like facebook what can google do what can uh, Apple do? What can all these companies do? Uh, what can WhatsApp do? Well, they are doing something known as encrypting data and that needs to be strengthened further as well. Encrypting data is very important because it keeps the bad guys away from your data. It also means that good guys can't get to your data either. Like when we know the attack happened in UK, uh, Theresa May is gunning uh, 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 WhatsApp to get you know, uh, encryption rights and access to people's data. Okay, but that's another debate to have. Okay? Right. Then, then there's also the issue about uh, what uh, uh, main organizations mm -hmm. like uh, Reliance Geo can do. W what can they do to ensure that something like an attack like this never happens again? Mm -hmm. You know, they need to make sure that their security is completely updated. They need to make sure that they are investing in the right professionals who handle situations mm -hmm. like this. Okay. okay, so we need to see statistics like that. We need to see facts like that from these companies. On that note, Sahil, we should also go to other uh, mobile companies, look at what they are saying. Well, Bharti Airtel, India's largest mobile operators, has reacted on this it has said data security breach is a real threat to everyone and airtel values customers privacy the most now gopal vittal the md and ceo of a firm said that talking about data security he also said that airtel at airtel they took it very seriously and let's hear uh, what more else he has to say yeah, i think this is a real threat that all of us live with around the world uh, and certainly in India, it's not just in telecom uh, companies, but it's in banks, it's in credit card companies. Uh, this is a real threat that we all face. Uh, we do our bit. We try and do what we can to actually protect and make sure that our systems are secure. The thing that we value most is customer privacy. We really take that very seriously. And I think that is one of the things that has actually led us to launching the secure platform. Coming back to you, Sahil, once again, uh, first of all, the first question comes to any consumer's mind. Reliance Geo is such a professional organization. They would have come with the best data network, the best security network, because they are the latest entrants. They launched their, their services in September last year. How did they allow this to happen with them? Really, there was a chink in the armor, do you say that? Well, see, that's actually a misconception. Uh, because they're a newer organization, it means that they're actually more vulnerable to attacks. Now, if you take a, if you look, take a look at the bigger boys, uh, or the big boys like Airtel or Vodafone, they've been here for some time. So they, and they've probably seen their fair share of attacks and leaks as well. But that means they've had more time to, you know, better deal with that, to strengthen their infrastructure mm -hmm. further. Uh, whereas uh, Reliance Geo hasn't had that much time. Okay, but that being said, uh, and I'll again have to bring up the point of NHS, that's been there forever as well, but they still got attacked. Okay, mm -hmm. so there is that contrast. But in the case of Reliance Geo, and I'm going to choose my words carefully here, maybe it's a good thing if this has happened, maybe it's a good thing because it means that in the future, they will be better suited to protect and upgrade their systems. And that's a very important thing that needs to be looked into. And Sahil also, sometimes when I go and log in, many times like a uh, flip card and they ask for my credit card details accept the cvv details do you think it's a wise uh, you know act, act on my part or somebody else's part if they go and enter those, those because these details can be leaked any day so do you think that they are all susceptible to uh, data theft and hacking 
Uh, they are, they are. Everything is susceptible to you know hacking and leaks. But a lot of these websites are quite secure in that sense. Uh, the reason they ask for your CVV details is because no one else will have that detail, you know, but you, and it's very hard. So that is encrypted data. We we are entering the realm of encrypted data. That as soon as you enter that, that is encrypted. So if a hacker even wants to get that, he can't really because he won't be able to, or she won't be able to make any sense of that information. But you know, more importantly than that. There is an issue about people. What people don't understand is that if people learned from their mistakes, if people did what they were supposed to do, we would never find ourselves in this mess. People, you know, we always encouraged people to, you know, back up your data, make sure everything is secure. But according to studies, only three out of ten people will actually back up their data. No one ever backs up the data. So that's one very important thing. But then there's another issue that, you know, a lot of people try to back it up by using cloud services, and these services tend to tend to you know completely crash and then don't work and then people just don't bothering you know with the uh, backing up their data on the cloud either so what people then do if they do get attacked if there is a ransomware attack or anything else they just think you know what it's just easier to pay them all the money mm -hmm. let's give them the ransom at least we'll get our uh, you know my, our information back our data back and that's a very big no no because if you do that you're encouraging ransomware so always you know back up your data make sure that you know you're using encrypted passwords if you are you know logging into somewhere make sure you're not using the same passwords for all your accounts because that's not going to help anyone because a hacker gets one password for one account he'll get your password for everything else as well so you have to make sure you know these are certain steps basic steps that are said time and time again that people need to take but you know people do tend to ignore them it's easier to ignore something than you know actually end up doing it on that account, we will tell our viewers where do India stands as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Well, cybersecurity, the top top country uh, path is in the cybersecurity league is Singapore. The top most country in cybersecurity is Singapore. Our second one is the United States, which it comes second as far as cybersecurity is concerned. Then there are other countries. Uh, Pat comes, uh, you know, very much ahead of India when it comes to cybersecurity. That includes Estonia, Russia, Malaysia, and other countries like that. But we talk about even uh, which countries are lower than India when it comes to cybersecurity. That country is China. Another country that is uh, lower in terms of cybersecurity is Germany. India stands 23rd in terms of cyber security as far as the cyber security is concerned while china comes at 32 that's how india and china they stand as far as cyber security is concerned but the country that tops the survey of cyber security is singapore followed by us and then there are many other countries including canada russia even a small country like estonia malaysia all of these countries are very high up there in the rankings of cyber security but india comes at 23rd when it comes to cybersecurity and Malaysia and other countries they come much above that but China comes at 32. Uh, on that note I would ask you once again uh, Sahil uh, give us an example like as to uh, what should a customer do in case the data breach happens what should they do first should they contact their uh, you know company uh, the customer the service provider customer call center or telecom or they, they have nothing to do well, if you do get attacked, and it depends on the type of attack, if you're talking about ransomware, uh, they will ask you for ransom, of course. And like I said, never pay the ransom because you're just encouraging for so that sort of activity to, you know, uh, keep, you know, expanding and people will keep doing that. So that's one thing you never do. Uh, number two is then, yes, you report it to authorities. India does have a lot of uh, uh, authorities that deal with such a situation like this. So you can go to these authorities, you can tell them that, look, this is the problem I'm facing, and then they will give you the right advice on what to do next. So these are the some tips. And of course, you have to protect yourself. So this all this comes back to you know why why should you, you know wait for the attack to happen and then do something about it you have to always make sure that you're protected yourself back up your data make sure your uh, software is uh, updated to the most recent software i mean did you know that when that ransomware attack happened the wanna cry one in indian organizations people were still using microsoft xp i mean that is ancient in, when you look at the software uh, stages that is an ancient software People are still and using. And do you recommend software. people going for? We can say that antivirus using in mobile phones. Will that uh, you know Anti somehow? Antivirus is one more step that you can take. That is definitely there. Uh, you can also uh, make sure that uh, all your uh, whenever you. Uh, go through your phone that once you've done it start deleting your cache because a lot of data is stored in there as well so you can uh, delete your caches keep making sure you do that uh, make sure you use encrypted passwords make sure you don't use the same passwords again and again so these are some certain steps that people can do and I mean you know these are all very 
yeah. minute steps. But if you take them, if you are very safe, because at the end of the day, it's your data. I mean, Absolutely. it's nobody else's data. And if you don't end up taking care of it, then it's going to affect you and no one else. All right, Sahil. On that note, we will, you know, end this particular edition of Beyond Wallet, where we told viewers what are the, uh, we can say, the drawbacks, where if the data get leaks, what should they do? With this, it is taught, say to goodbye to all our viewers. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Beyond, and thanks for watching this.